Mustafa Adamu is taking his boat to his favorite fishing spot, but he's not sure what he'll catch today. Like many others, he depends on Lake Chad for his livelihood. But recently, Mustafa has noticed changes in the lake. The water level has fallen dramatically. When the water is low, we can still catch fish. But then we have a problem because it's harder to row the boat. It's not just Mustafa who's found it more difficult to fish on the Chad side of the lake. His brothers are also feeling the squeeze. After returning home from an early trip, Mustafa is disappointed with their catch. The brothers used to get larger hauls, 10 times as much as today's catch. I'm going to clean it, smoke it, and then send it to the market in Nigeria. Mustafa and his brothers are some of the 20 million people in the area who are seeing their way of life in peril. Once the sixth largest freshwater lake in the world, Lake Chad used to cover more than 10,000 square miles. These satellite images capture the extent to which it has shrunk over the last four decades. Today, it's only one-fifth of its original size. The lake is shared by four countries, Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria and Niger. On the Niger side, the water has totally vanished. While some experts believe that the shrinking of the lake is part of a natural cycle, others say Lake Chad is a victim of global warming that has changed rainfall patterns and accelerated the evaporation of the lake's water. This is happening on lakes all over the world. Dr. Rajendra Pachauri is the chairman of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Lake Aral in Central Asia is shrinking as well. We know the glaciers are melting rapidly throughout the world, so some of the rivers are going to see a decline in flows over a period of time. As the water recedes, fewer fish are coming here and many species are beginning to vanish. The lake is also becoming harder to work. Low water levels have fostered the growth of thick vegetation all over the lake. As this grass is dislodged, it forms masses of floating islands, tangling everything from fishing lines to boat motors. The grass in the water drags the nets, and then we have to replace them. Lake Chad gets its water supply from the Lagoon Chari River system, but the amount of water it gets has been cut in half. Secretary General of the Lake Chad region, Ngana Jakila. Rivers like the Logon from Cameroon that goes into the Chari, that comes from the Central African Republic, suffer from global warming. They don't have enough water to feed Lake Chad. It's not only fishermen who are feeling the strain. Farmers are also suffering. They rely on the waters of Lake Chad for their crops. This year, Musa and his family are lucky. Their harvest has been good but they've seen water reserves drop so much that they and their neighbors have had to ration it. Between farmers, one will say, I will take water Friday, and the other will say, no, today is my day, and I will take it. The problem is among the farmers. Farmers like Musa once engaged in poor irrigation methods. This combined with the slash and burn methods of agriculture are partly to blame for the demise of Lake Chad. Nomadic herders have also been hurt. They now have to travel much further for their water. When I was young, I saw many things. The water was gone completely. There was none for animals or farmers, and people left and went to another place. The cow's belly was full of sand. During a recent trek to Bol, a major city in the region, Adam's group stumbled on a wadi, a watering hole, a feast for cattle. 
Wadis collect water during the wet season, which lasts a few months beyond the last drop of rain. But herders compete with fishermen for access to the water. The only problem is when cows cross the water. They tear our nets. Sand and marshes have filled in the space once covered by water, a sign that the Sahara Desert to the north is spreading towards Lake Chad. The impact, loss of plant and animal life that has kept herds and people alive. If the desert continues to expand, people fear they will go hungry. In a bid to halt this desert sprawl, families are planting trees with support from the World Food Program. Food analyst Ibrahim Diop. We distribute hot meals while the population works, so they don't have to go looking for jobs or to find something to eat. By the end of the year, they will have enough food to eat from their own crops. An alternative plan to replenish Lake Chad includes building a channel 100 to 150 kilometers long to divert water from the Obangi River in the Central African Republic, which separates the two Congos into Lake Chad. But according to Ungana Jakila, around $6 million would be needed to implement the project. This project could bring enough water to Lake Chad. I believe that it will revive economic activities and agriculture will expand. But there's no funding for this project yet, and the need to reverse Lake Chad's problems is becoming more urgent. By the year 2020, an estimated 35 million people, almost double the number who live there now, will depend on Lake Chad for their survival. For them, the disappearance of Lake Chad would be a disaster.